everybody. Welcome back to Environmental Science Analysis with Dr. Lisa. Um, I gave you some videos on how to do linear regressions in Excel, and they're great, uh, but there's a couple things that they miss. And so I, this is a video to try to wrap up a few things, a few finer points about doing regressions in Excel. And what I specifically we're going to talk about is how do you determine whether your, your coefficients are statistically significant uh, depending on which type of regression you use, okay? So here's the data. This is data from that FISH uh, data set that I've used several times. This is actually data I'm using to write a paper, uh, so I think it's a good idea. This is uh, measured concentrations of total, total PFAS, total perfluoro compounds measured in some FISH samples, and I'm regressing it against some of these descriptors. Um, and so I'm going to do a multiple linear regression. And I just want to point out that whenever you're doing a regression, you have a couple of options. One is that you could just regress your data with no transformation. It's fine, just leave it the way it is. Um, if you suspect that your data is log normally distributed, which a lot of environmental data is, you might want to log transform the data, which just means take the log of everything and then do the regressions. Um, if you, so, so doing nothing to your data is a good idea if you think your data is normally distributed. If you think it's log normally distributed, you could try log transformations. If you ha don't have the faintest clue what your distribution, whether it's normal, log normal, totally not normal, who knows, then a good thing to do is rank your data. And so that's what I've done here. That's why I have integers here, because this is all ranked, highest to lowest, number one to number 212. Um, and that's a good way to do things if you just don't know what the distribution is. There's also possibilities to scale the data. That's a little bit more sophisticated, so I'm not going to talk about it too much, but these are your options. So here I'm doing a regression of, um, law of Pearson, a Pearson ranked correlation. I'm, I'm regressing the ranked data. So of course one of the things we could do is just do the regression using the formulas, right? So you know, known, X, known Y's first, and then I'll do known X's. Uh, boom, that only works if you have only one Y and one X. And if we use F4, we can put F4 puts the little dollar signs in there. You can toggle through them. F4 once, twice, three times, four times. Anyway, okay, so there's your slope. Uh, and we could, uh, we could do the intercept here. Intercept. Same thing, we could do the uh, R squared here. So we could get, uh, if we're just doing a one parameter linear regression, we could do it with these formulas, right? But we might want to do a multiple parameter linear regression. And one way to do that, of course, is to go up here to data, data analysis, pick regression. It remembers the last thing you did, and I was just practicing this. So I'm going to include the labels here, comma, I'm sorry, not comma hit the down arrow and then here's my X range all of my different X's you can see all of them here and I'm including the labels if you're going to include the labels you got to click the box that says yes I have labels and then give it some place to put your output I'm going to put it up here and say OK and boom there's your your regression and now see because I included the labels everything is labeled nicely here I know which is which so when you do this big complicated version of the um, linear regression, multiple linear regression in Excel, you get this wonderful thing over here, which is the p-value. It tells you whether these things are significant or right or not. So in classical statistics, if the p is less than 0.05, we consider it to be statistically significant at the 95% confidence level, and that's what most people use. Um, we can argue whether you should use different things, but most people use P.05, so that would mean that this is significant, uh, this, is, this PCB ratio is significant, and the mercury is significant. But this is slow and clunky, there's a lot of clicking involved, right? So frequently we might want to instead use the line est function, so no labels on this one. Here's Y, comma, and then here's all my X's. I got five X's don't want to include the labels, and then it's very important to then say, okay, uh, do you want to set your intercept equal to zero or calculate it normally? I'm going to say calculate it normally. And then the next thing, do you want to return additional regress regression statistics? And I'm going to say yes, true. Then when I hit enter in the new versions of Excel, it automatically populates this whole table. So here's my line est, line est. Um, and there's this wonderful little table here that if you go look on the uh, Microsoft Access or Microsoft website, it'll give you this table that explains what this line est output means, right? So the things at the top are the coefficients. 
coefficients. The next thing are, you can see these are the standard errors. So standard error. Uh, after that, this first thing is the R squared, but then this thing is the standard error of the variance. Uh, then this is the degrees of freedom, and I've never really cared about that. I don't really care about these either, but so the, the, some of these are maybe not very important. But what is important is right here, the standard error. Okay, so first thing, notice my coefficient here, 0 0.306, that's for mercury. Okay, minus 0 0.077, that's the BDE ratio. And notice that is exactly the opposite of the way they're listed up here, which is very, very frustrating, right? Uh, the, this is the order in which they're listed in the input, but in the output they come out in exactly the reverse order. This is something that took me a long time to figure out. It's not obvious. I don't know what genius thought this up, but that's the way they do it. Okay, so that's what these things stand for, and then this is the intercept. The last one's the intercept. Okay, so that's very important to know. Uh, and then the, the next thing that's really useful and important to know is that the standard error can be used to calculate the 95%, not 96%, sorry, 95% confidence, confidence interval is equal to 1.96 times, times the standard error. Okay, did you know that? That's something you're supposed to learn in statistics. You may or may not have learned it. Um, so I could say equals 1.96 times the standard error here. Okay, and so this is my 95% confidence limits. CL. I can calculate that for all of these and then I can ask myself, is this 95% confidence limit smaller than the coefficient itself? If so, if I subtract 0.17 from 0.30, I'm still in the positive region. And so that means that this is a statistically significant result. So we got something similar up here. You notice uh, here, again, we're all backwards. So here's 0 0.036, 0 0.306. Um, and if I add, if I subtract uh, 0 0.306 minus my 95% confidence limit here, I should get 0.13567, which is what you're getting here, 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 somewhere in here, here. Uh, close, not exactly the same, but pretty close to my lower 95% confidence limits. Okay, so what this is saying is, again, if this number is smaller than the absolute value of your slope, your coefficient, then is statistically significant, right? Because this one here is statistically significant, we know from the p-value. And so we could calculate this, and we could also just do a real simple thing of saying, is this 1.96 times the standard error less than the coefficient? We can do a true-false statement. So right now, the way I've written this, if it comes out true, then this is statistically significant, and if it comes out false, it's not statistically significant, right? So the PCB ratio, uh, now notice, I have uh, my PCB ratio, 0.11 is, is less, if, even if I double it, you know, multiply by 0.96, so it's about doubling. So 0.22 is still less than 0.35, uh, but this is coming up false because I need to remember to also in here say absolute value of my slope term. So now if this statement is true, then uh, my, my coefficient is statistically significant. So that's a way you can determine statistical significance using line est without having to go through all the clicking and the BS that you had to do to get this this output doing the linear regression. And the other thing that's great about line est is look at this, okay? So right now, right, I'm doing the sum of measured concentration. Over here, I got some other stuff going on. Here's PFOS. So copy and watch what happens when I hit paste. Booyah, all these numbers now have changed because the line est updates itself as the numbers change over here, whereas this table up here does not. So that is one of the good things about using the line est function. Um, it does a little bit of a, it, it, it's, it's, it's alive in real time. Whereas this regression that you got by going to data, data analysis, regression, this thing is dead. It's, it's constant, it's static, it doesn't change. Whereas this is not static, it's alive and it can change. So that's how you can use line est to determine statistical significance. 
Uh, line est is also nice because if I put in my dollar signs here appropriately, I can then click and drag these formulas uh, and you not have to type this in every time, just like with any other formula. You just need to give it enough space uh, to, to do what you need to do because it's an array formula, formula, it takes up a lot of space, but if I put the dollar signs in here, I could just copy and paste this whole thing to another place in my spreadsheet, and if I do that right now, it's going to give you me a value because now it's trying to it's trying to regress this data down here, which includes all of these empty cells. So that's not going to work. But the point is, it does update as you move it around the, the spreadsheet. Okay, so that's one of the other advantages of Linest. You could you could put the dollar signs in there and then use it throughout your spreadsheet to do columns and columns of data. But of course, if you have columns and columns of data and you need to start looping through your data, the better way to do that is to use something like R. The great thing about R is that you can set up these routines to just go through your data, loop through your data, and uh, uh, do a lot of data analysis in a really short amount of time.